stampers. Another video tutorial coming at you. This one is for the brand new gift bag punch board. Love it, love it, love it. The bags that I was going to show are upstairs. Uh, but I have pictures of them, so in the blog post there's going to be pictures of the bags I've already made. But for this one... We're going to use some of the brand new, actually it's envelope paper, um, but I like the fact that it was plain on one side and patterned on the other. So, I'm going to show you how to work this puppy. We've got the folder, the little bone folder in there, the punch on this side. There's a reverse punch over here that'll give you the holes in the top of your bag um, that you can string your ribbon through. And you can do small, medium, and large bags. Um, so you can do a small 10 inch, a medium 11 inch, or a large or just 12 inch. And I've left my paper at 12 by 12. So I've got the 12 inch and then you can make it any length you want. So you can have a really short bag or you can have a long bag up to 12. I'm just gonna leave my paper as it is so you can see the largest version. And then what we're gonna do, let's see if I can remember how to do this. <laughs> we're gonna line up with our start line. It says the start right there. We're gonna punch. And then you're going to go down the horizontal mark and we're making the large bag. So I'm going to go down the large mark and it's not going to go all the way. Okay. This is the front of your bag. So then you're going to move your large line or medium or small, doesn't matter which, up to the start line. Okay. Where this arrow, this pointy thing is right here. And then you're going to punch. And then you're going to come up this triangle, down this triangle. You're going to still do the horizontal. And then you're going to do the side one and the side two. Okay? They don't say side one and side two, but that's what they are, side one and side two. So you've got a larger front and a smaller side. You're going to take your side two line and you're going to push that up to the start. And you're going to punch, and you can see your flaps happen in there. And we want the horizontal line, and we want our large line again. This is the back. And we're going to take this and push this up to the start. Punch. We're going to do triangle, triangle, horizontal, side one side two, oh, side two. And then you have this little tiny tab left over, right? And then you're going to take your side two line, move it up to the start. Oh, got my head in the way of the camera. Sorry if I bumped it. And even that's hard to see for me. There we go. And punch. Okay. So now I am going to take some scissors. And this little guy, I am going to cut off. And actually, I'm going to angle this. And I'm going to angle the other one once I fold it. So there's our bottoms are all done. And I am going to fold all of my score lines. And when you have a longer piece of paper, just make sure you line up because you've only scored to about here and then you have to just follow the fold when you make it up to the other part of your paper. See, so we've only got a fold to roughly about here. So when I fold this, I'm going to make sure my paper lines up. I'm going to turn it around the other way. Fold that. Got my little crease here. Now that I've got this crease, I'm going to angle my top 
So that's our flap that's going to close everything. And these little guides on the side become the gussets, I believe they call them, in the bottom of the bag. I find them easier to fold once my bag's put together, but it's completely up to you. Okay, now I'm just going to grab my snail because it's close, use some fuse, some of the tear tape, whatever is your preference for an adhesive that won't come apart. Now fold over the small tab. You've got your adhesive here, and when you fold this over, <gasps> matchy, matchy, love it. And then I always oh, fold this way, fold that way again, just to make it. Oh, there we go. I'm going to fold in my sides. triangles so exciting and then what I want to do is fold these guys down where's my seam see I can't even find my seam that's how good it is there it is so I'm gonna call that the back I'm gonna call this the front so I'm gonna put these two down and this one down put some snail on my front flap and then put my front flap down. I choose to do that when I do boxes and bags just so that there's no seam on the front of your bag. Whereas back here, I mean the flaps are short, you're not going to need to worry about it too too much. Um, but if they're not, then you don't want any seams popping out here. And there you have a super cute gift bag. And this is the full 12 by 12, so if you had made it shorter, this is a large bottom, but you could make a short, large bag. You can cut the length to any you like. And actually, the first time I made a few of them, I made them all the 12 by 12, and then I just cut them where I wanted, because I was playing with the board and I wanted to see what I wanted to do and what the different lengths would look like. Oh, what I forgot to show you. All of your start lines, all of these lines here, you line up on the reverse side and punch, and it'll punch holes here so you can tie this with ribbon. Oh, I apologize. I forgot to show you guys that. Still really cute either way. You can fold this over or I have one bag that I just left without holes and I tied the ribbon around the outside to close it. So that is how you use the new Stampin' Up! gift bag punch board. Super, super cool. Hope you enjoyed the tutorial. Grab some of your paper and play and have fun with it and really learn how to use it and uh, have fun making lots of bags. <laughs> And then you'll have, oh, get some red and green. Start making them for Christmas. That'll work. You <laughs> have lots to play with. Happy stamping.